sorry for the six minute delay. Um, so at this time, um, what's next on the agenda, Kathy? Unless you can email it to my um, personal email and I can follow uh, along. Roll call. roll call is live. Okay, uh, roll call, would you roll call the uh, staff? Well, let me roll call the uh, council first. So since I don't have the agenda in front of me. Okay. Um, Marcus? I'm here, sir. Todd? Present. Okay. Um, Mike? Present. Okay. Jerry? Present. And Shirley? And Ms. Shirley's not on the line? Okay. Let the record stand that Shirley's not at today's meeting. Ms. Howe? Um, so would you call, um, Kathy, would you call roll call for staff and anybody else that might be listening? Uh, sure, Mr. Allen? Present. Attorney Walter? Ms. Walter, Karen Walter? We'll give her a moment. Um, uh, Attorney Ball. Okay, thank you. Uh, Abby Ball? Present. Jim Wadowitz? I know he's on. He may be uh, muted. Okay, thank you, I Carrie Warren. Carrie, are you present? Present. Uh, Adam McLam. Present. Todd Hunsinger. Present. Uh, Brandy Dees. Present. Alicia Massey. Present. Hayden Kramer. Present. And then Kathy Queen Clerk. Anyone I missed, please speak up. Gary. Mr. Gary Evans. Evans. Well, Gary Evans, thank you. Thank you. Okay, then uh, we do the Pledge of Allegiance, Mayor Alvarez. Okay, everyone. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag. of the United States of America and to the Republic <laughs> for which it stands. One nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we'll just take a 10-second um, moment of silence, there's just so many things to reflect right now. Okay. Um, at this time, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? If not, I'll need a motion, please, to approve the agenda. This is my motion to approve. Mr. Heads made a motion to approve. Um, Jerry? In favor. Okay. Todd? In favor. And uh, Marcus? In favor. Okay, motion carries. Agenda is approved as presented. Next are the, um, there's two presentations. First is a day of healing. Um, these Mayor are on the agenda, right? Did yeah, I got, I got them right here. Okay, thank you. Okay, so just get, bear with me because it's on my phone uh, as I read it. This is a proclamation for a day of healing, prayer, and reflection. Whereas I, mayor of the town of Indian Trail, members of the Indian Trail Town Council, and the Indian Trail Town staff, pause to recognize the senseless and tragic death of George Floyd on May 25, 2020. Whereas, as representatives of the town of Indian Trail, join the Indian Trail community, and the nation in grieving this and other unnecessary acts that cause not only sadness, uncertainty, but also create turmoil among the people of this great nation. Whereas I, mayor of the town of Indian Trail, along with members of the town council town and town staff care deeply these un about these injustices and support our fellow citizens and wanting necessary and meaningful change. We are grateful for all those who work to protect and uphold our constitutional rights and for those who also continue to value and relentlessly pursue a more perfect union, 
through justice and equality for all. Now, therefore, in recognition of the need for meaningful and necessary change, I, Michael L. Alvarez, Mayor of the Town of Indian Trail, do hereby proclaim June 9th, 2020, as a day of healing, prayer, and reflection, and encourage its observance to all citizens of the Town of Indian Trail. In testimony whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused it to be affixed to the seal of the Town of Indian Trail on this ninth day of June, 2020. Okay, we'll move on. Our second item on presentations is a gun violence awareness. This past Friday was uh, Gun Violence Awareness Day on uh, June 5th. Um, so we have this proclamation, whereas National Gun Violence Awareness Day is to honor and remember all victims of survivor and, and survivors of gun violence and to declare that we as a nation must do more to effective, effectively reduce gun violence. Whereas in 2018, 36,000 people in the United States were killed by gun violence and another 29,000 injured. Whereas in 2018, 667 children under the age of 11 were killed or injured in gun violence. Whereas we knew our commitment to reduce gun violence and pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and encourage responsible gun ownership to help keep families safe. And now therefore I, Michael L. Alvarez, Mayor of the Town of Indian Trail, honor the victims whose lives were lost and forever changed as a result of gun violence and vow to continue to support efforts to reduce gun violence and designate June 5th, 2020 as National Gun Violence Awareness Day in the city of Indian Trail, I encourage all citizens to help recognize this day. In testimony whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused it to be fixed to the great seal of the town of Indian Trail, North Carolina on this ninth day of 2020. Thank you. Bear with me one second as I scroll back to our agenda. Okay. All right. Public comments. Were there anybody that received any public comments over the last two weeks? No comments, Mayor Alvarez. Oh. Oh, okay. I do have something to forward to all the council members. It's not a public comment, but it is an email from a resident. I will get that to you uh, as soon as possible. Is uh, Captain James here? He or is are we going to, we can. He's present. He is what? He's present. He just okay. muted. Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Good evening, Captain. Thanks for attending. Good evening, Mr. Um, Mayor. Um, Council. Um, the floor is yours. The floor is yours, sir. Okay. Um, I'll give you a short update. We've had a busy couple weeks. Um, our call volume continues to uptick, but I would like to uh, to give a shout out to the school resource officers that have been temporarily placed in Indian Trail to help us out uh, since school's been out and for the rest for the remainder of the summer. Um, they are making it uh, variable or bearable. I'm sorry, but the um, especially with trying to work around vacations and being allowed to let you know people off to to be with their families. Um, uh, continue to see um, accidents on the 74 corridor. Um, they are staying about the same number uh, with the enforcement efforts that we've had, um, but due to the call volume too, that's a uh, that's kind of a hit and miss kind of thing. Whether we're, we're having some a car in the area when some of these accidents are happening, but not not near as much as we were before. Um, I know in your agendas that uh, there was a. Mr. Barber asked, I read a public statement that was uh, released to the media by the sheriff and uh, several other advocates uh, from the county. And um, unless you have any questions about what I've covered so far, I'll be glad to read that now if you would like. Does anybody, does anyone have a uh, question for the captain? No? Please do read it. All right. Uh, this release was dated May 30th and it was um, put out regarding the death of Mr. George Floyd. Uh, it was from Sheriff Eddie Cathy, uh, Police Chief Brian Gear from the city of Monroe, 
uh, President Nathal Haley uh, from Union County NAACP, and President J.N. Coble of the Union County Baptist Ministers Fellowship. And it reads, uh, the death of Mr. George Floyd is deeply unsettling and rightly deserving of great concern from all American citizens. The deplorable actions of the Minneapolis police officers who were involved in this matter are inconsistent with the training, practices, professional standards, and values of law enforcement professionals. We commend Minneapolis Police Chief Maria Arredonado for his swift and decisive action to terminate the employment of the officers involved. We hope federal, state, and local officials will work cooper cooperatively to fully and completely investigate the death of Mr. Floyd and bring justice to his family and the people of Minneapolis. While we understand the indignation of the people in Minne Minne excuse me, Minneapolis and around the country, we do not condone unlawful <clears throat> rioting. We therefore pray for peaceful demonstrations that will honor the life of Mr. Floyd while strongly objecting to his defenseless and reprehensible death. The Union County Sheriff's Office and Monroe Police Department will work endlessly to maintain the trust and faith of the community it serves. Their mutual commitment to proper and lawful policing, respect for all human life, and their deep desire to work cooperatively with the public and organizations such as the NAACP and the Baptist Ministers Fellowship demonstrates an example we should all be proud of in Union County. We extend our deepest condolences to the Floyd family for their loss. We mourn with them during this difficult time and we pray complete justice will be served. And that is signed by Sheriff Eddie Cathy, uh, Brian Gilliard, uh, Nathan Haley, and J.N. Coble. Thank you, Captain. Yes, sir. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I, I would like to take a few of the sheriff's comments that I've, I've overheard him talking over the previous days and addressing the Floyd death. And the council, and you know this just as well as we do, we have good people in this county. A really good injury that we enjoy working for and serving. Um, we try our best, um, for the lack of a better term, to keep the nonsense out of this county. And the, uh, we have a, a really good relationship uh, with the community we serve, we believe. Um, but we're also always looking to improve, and we will continue to do that. Well, I think I can speak for the council, but they can speak up too. But definitely speaking for myself, we are um, happy to have you. Uh, we, it's like there's no words, Captain, that can truly grasp how much you mean to this town and to all of us. Well, thank you very I, much. I wouldn't even I, w I wouldn't even know how to put it into the word into words. You're in our hearts, you're in our souls, and we wear all of you on our shoulders every day. You are part of our family. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else who would like to comment for the captain? Uh, this is Todd Barber. I just want to say uh, thank you, everyone, for your service. And I think your division and Union County Sheriff's Office is something we can be proud of, and I know the citizens that, and the voters really appreciate what y'all do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Proud of you. Mm. That's all I got. Mm. Any other comments? Okay. Captain, you stay safe and uh, out there. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda, which I just lost my um, – I'll pull it back up. But the consent agenda, I'll need a motion. Motion to approve. Mr. McIntyre's made a motion to approve the consent agenda. Uh, all in favor? Um, Mr. Barber? Approve. Mr. Head? In favor. And Mr. Morse? Approve. Okay, let it, the record stand that the consent agenda has passed unanimously. We have a public hearing, fiscal year 2021 budget hearing. This is information. And Mr. A um, Mr. Allen, the floor is yours. 
Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I presented the budget uh, formally to the board at the May 23rd meeting, and it's been available for public inspection since that time. Uh, the, the purpose of the public hearing today is to hear any comments from the public, and um, we'll call on Ms. Queen in a moment to see if she has received any comments. I would say that uh, following, um, after you close the public hearing, uh, we will continue to receive comments and the agenda, I mean, the, the budget will be calendared on the agenda for the next meeting for the final approval um, after, and after you hear any public comment, additional public comments at that meeting, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to open the floor to the council. Uh, as I call you, if you have any comments on the budget. Uh, Mr. Morris? No, um, I'm very pleased with the budget. All good. Thank you. Mr. Head? Ditto. Ditto. I'm guessing that's a yes. Mr. Yes. Barber? Uh, I agree with Mr. Morris. I'm, I'm with the budget and looks good. I appreciate everybody's hard work on this and being responsible. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. McIntyre? Yes, um, thank you. So just a quick question before I make my comment. Have you opened the public comments yet or you will do so after we speak? I will do so after you speak. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Sorry. yes, yeah. Um, the, the budget process this year was um, very, um, I want to say very informative for all of us. Um, the particip participation by staff and Mr. Allen and Mr. Allen coming on late in the process, I think is a testament to his leadership to get us to the point where we're now ready to, you know, be able to pass the budget based on the comments we get by the end of June. So um, I want to recognize Mr. Allen, you and your staff, sir, you and your department heads for taking the time, putting this together, using the input that we, we gave, um, the input received from the sheriff's office and adding the um, position <coughs> in the town to enhance our policing of, you know, of the town. So I want to commend everybody, including council as well, for their efforts in this budget. This was a truly collaborative effort. And I think we have, we, we have a budget that we can be proud of because we are not raising any taxes and we're still providing services, in some cases, even more services to our residents. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. I would ditto Mr. McIntyre and the rest of the council's comments. This is about as flawless of a budget process as I've had since being mayor. I wanna thank the staff, there's so many to thank and Mr. Allen, thank you for your leadership. You a testament to being to a true leader. At this time, I will open up public comment. Ms. Um, Queen, have you received any? Uh, let me see. I think I have one <clears throat> right here. Uh, okay, if you would, if you would read from, it. We have one from Jake Morris. He said, I'd like to know thoughts on cleaning up some of the area around Old Monroe, Waxhaw Indian Trail. He doesn't, I guess, assume he means road. Um, I'd love I'd love two main things to see a roundabout at this intersection to improve thoroughput throughput. I'd also be interested in getting the water tower painted similar to the Stallings water tower to make our entire town as beautiful as the town hall property. Is that it? That's it. That's the only Is comment. I Jake Morris. Okay so, okay, so at this time I'll close the public hearings for tonight and open public hearings until they close. When are we closing them, Mr. Allen? For, yes. for the budget? Your, Your Honor, we can continue to receive comments up until uh, the, the next, uh, council meeting, and then uh, Ms. Queen okay. will read those comments at the next council meeting, and then prior, and then you will adopt the budget. Okay, public comments will be will will remain open until the next till the adoption of the budget at the next council meeting. Mayor Albert. Um, Yes. Um, I believe Ms. Walter, uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Walter, are you present? Yes, I, I am. I think Ms. Walter was going to close the public hearing, but then hear comments at the next meeting, um, <coughs> just as courtesy. My apologies. I was trying okay. to open my mic, um, Mayor. Yes. Yeah, so, so pra practice. We will close the budget hearing tonight. Okay. Due to the uh, laws in place. 
for virtual meetings during a state of emergency. We will be required, to, we will be accepting public comment for 24 additional hours or longer as, as um, uh, Mr. Allen said. So the public hearing is officially closed and um, any comments that come between now and the next meeting uh, can be read into the record prior to the vote by the board, by the council. Thank you for that. Okay, so we can move on now, Ms. Walter? Did you close yes. the hearing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll close, close yeah we'll, close, we'll close the public hearing. And uh, we'll move on to new business. There is no old business. <laughs> Item A is approval of the amended stormwater ordinance. Mr. Allen, is this you or would Adam be handling this? Um, I apologize, uh, your mayor. I was um, flipping through my agenda here. Um, Okay, that, that, that's okay. It's tough to have a virtual meeting of this magnitude. Okay. B basically, actually, Ms. Queen is the one who orchestrated this. Um, this is um, the change in the bylaws. Is that correct, Kathy? That is correct. The, uh, the stormwater ordinance that we did last year had, uh, that was adopted on May 28, 2019, had the full stormwater bylaws incorporated. So we just removed the bylaws and made reference to it. Attorney Walter reviewed it. Um, so there's no major change, just we updated the bylaws. So we just updated them. So we wouldn't have to do this stormwater ordinance again just one time. Okay. Um, that's all then. Uh, Mr. Head, do you have any questions? No. Mr. Morris? Well, just a point of clarification. Um, in the packet, it said that primarily terms have been extended to three years and the alternates have been eliminated. That was in the consent agenda, the bylaws for the original memo for the bylaws for both the park and the stormwater committee. Uh, I think one, one uh, body is five members, the stormwater committee is six, and uh, both of the liaisons and chairs uh, preferred not to have alternates on these boards. Okay, and um, so any of the existing um, seats, are they, are they coming to terms? Like, I know Cheryl was on Stormwater, and I believe she's not going to reapply. Well, the, the Park and the Storm Committee, both of those uh, seats in June 30th, so they will reappoint uh, those people that are reapplying for the positions in the manner. Uh, they'll make recommend recommendations to council, and council will appoint those members and then they and will be they, they will rotate every three years okay and, and when will we be, be making these appointments will this be the 23rd um, or the Ms. 9th mr morris the, you're moving off the you're moving off the uh, topic right well the appointments will be made on june 23rd and i'm going to be sending out information right. um updated information after this meeting once the bylaws are approved to the chairs and liaisons for those committees all right. Well, thank you, Kathy, for those answering those questions. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Uh, thank you. Ms. McIntyre? I don't have any questions, sir. Okay. I think I got everybody. Did I get you, Mr. Barber? Yes. Yes. No questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I need a motion to approve the storm, the amended stormwater ordinance. I'll make that motion, sir. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion. Mr. Morris? In favor? Mr. Head? In favor. And Mr. Barber? In favor. Let the record stand. It passed unanimously. And Kathy, please get that information to Mr. Morris and the rest of the council. Okay. I will do. Thank um, you. Thank you. The next item B is mowing responsibility, public works position. Mr. Allen, you yes, can sir. have this touchy subject. <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, thank you for uh, recognizing me, Mayor. Uh, council Member Barber requested that this be put on the agenda for council discussion. Um, as you know, uh, NCDOT, unfortunately, is dealing with a number of financial issues for, for several different reasons. And because of that, they have been unable to fulfill their typical normal responsibility <laughs> of their uh, rights of way. And so we have been receiving some complaints uh, from, from residents, and I'm sure that many of you have been receiving those as well. And so Mr. Barber has suggested that we put this on the agenda to discuss. Um, it is a DOT responsibility, but of course, when people see that tall grass, 
It's a reflection on our community. They don't always understand that it's a DOT um, issue. And there are other towns that, that do most some of those rights of way for that reason. And in fact, um, your staff has informed me that at one time um, that the town did mow some of the DOT right of ways. They did in, mowed Indian Trail Road, Unionville Indian Trail Road, and Rogers Road um, in the past. And that practice was discontinued two or three years ago. Um, this is a policy matter, Your Honor. So if council would like for us to resume mowing those streets or other DOT streets, we can certainly do that. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is we do have two positions frozen in public works at the present time. Um, and that um, as a result of that, if council does want us to go back to, um, to mowing, of these DOT rights of way, um, it would be my intention, uh, unless council objects, that I f unfreeze one of those positions and that additional staff person would, would enable um, Adam and his staff to be able to handle the additional responsibilities. And that's all okay. I have. Okay, uh, Mr. Morse, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, what would be the additional um, equipment and the total cost to take this on? And then also, are we setting a precedent? Um, you said that India Trail was doing this a few years back, and then we we no longer decided, or we decided to no longer do that. Um, if we decide to do that this year, do we need to buy you know, equipment? And then again, how much um, is that staff person? Okay, um, uh, Mr. Morris, I will. Um, I'll take a stab at this, and then I'd like for Adam to chime in on that. Um, I don't, we would not be setting a legal precedent. Uh, we would be setting, there might be an expectation among some folks that if you do it this year, that you do it in subsequent years. So I think it might be that type of a precedent expectation, but not a legal precedent. Um, we actually, we, we have to rent the equipment for this type of mowing. Um, Adam does not have a bush hog um, or, a, or a sickle mower um, in his um, inventory because he Typically, his crews don't do this type of mowing. So when they do that, then they have to rent that equipment. So we, there would be a cost to renting the equipment. Um, and I'm not sure about the salary of the person. It is in the budget um, as a, you know, a laborer type salary. So it is something that is budgeted for. We just had not filled, um, as you know, because of the, the loss in revenues from the sales tax, we've been doing everything we can to um, to have a conservative budget. However, based on the projections we're seeing right now, we'll still, even if we uh, fill that position, we won't have any problem ending the fiscal year on a positive note. Um, Adam, could I get you to um, elaborate on my comments? Sure, I think, I mean, you hit everything I would have thought about saying, um, we, we did use to mow them. We actually started mowing most of those roadways after we installed uh, the sidewalks several years ago on those. And then that's when we pulled back uh, when the decision was made that it was a DOT responsibility and that we would let them have the responsibility of taking care of it. Okay, Mr. Morse, does that answer your question? Partially. Um, so, if we contract this out, if we rent the equipment or whatever, what 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 kind of what kind of cost is this to, to do mowing? Um, if we took that on, say the rest of the year, just but ballpark. Right now, sitting here, I don't know that I would have a number that I could give you that would be close enough that I'd feel comfortable when I set a number that it may not be part <coughs> or minus over that. We can definitely look at getting a tighter number if we want to know exactly, you know, what that cost is going to be um, for equipment. Yeah, I mean, myself, I would not be opposed to trying to, for, at least for safety reasons, um, especially around these intersections and the whatnot, where it's becoming difficult to actually see due to the high weeds and grass. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I would like to know what the, con the, the fiscal constraints of that endeavor would be. Thank you. One other thing I'd throw in there, if that's if it's all right, is um, I did notice that DOT has actually, when we sent this memo out, they had not started mowing yet. But as of I think yesterday or the day before, I actually saw them on uh, Unionville Indian Trail Road actually mowing. Um, I think it was e it was either Monday or today I saw them. That's good information, Adam. 
Um, Mr. Head, do you have a question or comment? Um, uh, or, oh, go ahead before I speak. Uh, no, go ahead, Mayor. Um, I'm just a suggestion to the council on this one. With DOT out there mowing and with Adam getting the cost for Mr. Morris out of respect for Mr. Morris and um, seeing what DOT does, it might be a good idea to table this to the next meeting, pending what DOT does. But that's up to the council. Um, so, Mr. Head, you have any questions or comments? Well, you stole the words right uh, out of my mouth. But the uh, other question I had, um, because I was going to say, knowing what we not know now, let's delay it. Um, uh, just a comment and a question, Adam. Um, uh, adding the, uh, and I know it's in this year's budget, but uh, what's the cost of adding uh, an additional person? And I guess this person would be full time, correct? The person would be full time. Um, I don't. From an HR perspective, I don't know if I need to answer how much that starting salary potentially would be. I don't know if I'm going to say something I shouldn't say. Okay. Salary levels are, are, are public record, Adam. So if you do want to share that information, you can. Can I say something? Um, who's this speaking? Is, this is Carrie. Oh, um, well, go ahead, yeah. Carrie. I, just off the cuff, I think it would be difficult to um, put a, a number on this position right now because it's a different level of experience that we would probably be looking for in a, a mower with a person using a bush hog. We don't have that right now. So I think it would just take a little bit of gathering information before we could probably put that together and figure out what the salary range would be. Um, the, the only other comment I have then is, um, and I think uh, maybe Councilman Norris said this as well. I don't want to set a precedent. Um, and the second comment is, uh, yes, uh, you know, we're looking good this year. But we still don't really know what's going to happen next year in terms of uh, revenues coming in. So um, I think it's good that we postpone it. Um, I'm glad to see DOT uh, uh, starting to mow. And I think we just uh, sit back and see what happens for a couple months. And that's all I have. Mayor. Okay. Are you, um, Mr. Morris? I mean, Mr. Barber? Oh, yes, uh, just a couple of clarifications. Uh, uh, I did hear that uh, it, the position's already budgeted, correct, Mr. Allen? Uh, yes, sir. We actually have two positions that are budgeted in public works that are not filled, um, both in the current year budget that ends on June 30 <clears throat> and in the new budget that begins on July 1. So those positions are, are budgeted, yes, sir. And the uh, next question is, is uh, the... <clears throat> Uh, since it's, you know, it's already budget, we just have to unfreeze one position, correct? Yes, sir. That was what I was proposing to do. Okay. Well, I, I kind of like to uh, see that, uh, like it was brought up, and I don't know if it was Mr. Head or Mr. Morris, but uh, yeah, I think we do need to see the cost of position, everything, get the cost. And since DOT is more mowing, then I would be for delaying this also to another meeting and Let's see if they keep mowing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we don't want to mow if they're doing it. So uh, that, that that's what I've got. Back to you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McIntyre, unless you have any comments, we can table this. Um, Mayor Alvarez, <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. I do believe Ms. Howe joined the line. Uh, I was texted a moment ago. Ms. Howe, are you there? I was told she was let into the meeting, but I don't see her. Okay. Um, Ms. Howell, if you're there, just speak up anytime so I can recognize you. Okay, so thank you. I, I, oh, I hear, I hear. I hear. I got it. All right. So, um, so, so do I get to speak, Mr. Mayor, or are you going to take my, my, my opportunity? Hmm, I'm thinking about that, Marcus. Well, I mean, no, go ahead. You, you qualified the statement <laughs> before you ever let me speak. <laughs> no, but it's I, okay. I mean, I, it's, go ahead, speak. Okay. speak. I, 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 have speak. To, I have to tease the one-armed man, so it's okay. Um, no, I, oh, I agree with, there we go. I, I, 
I agree with the the um, other council members in t in tabling that. Um, the 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 thing is, the, the question that I have really for Adam and Ray is, Adam, when I know that we're in June, the the fiscal year ends in the next you know couple of days. Um, when do, when do you foresee hiring um, this or filling the, these two positions that you have in the next budget? Um, Mr. McIntyre, could I respond to that? Sure. Um, um, Adam would like to fill them right now, immediately, would be his <laughs> preference because he feels it, and I feel rightfully so, that he could use the manpower. Um, however, we've got those two positions frozen because of the, the current financial situation. Um, what I would suggest is that as we move into the new fiscal year, see how things are going, um, it would be a decision for the, um, the new manager that will be coming on board in August, probably to make that decision um, as possible okay. prior to that, but probably when the new manager comes on board. All right, thank you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm okay you. with the group. I'm okay with, with council um, delaying this for a bit, get some pricing and see what direction DOT takes. Ms. Howe, are you up to speed on the mowing? I am, thank you. Are you okay if we table this? Yes. Okay. Um, so the mowing responsibility tabled. Um, please just keep us up, up to date. All right. So that brings us to um, item B, Old Monroe Road, financing no. alternatives. Yeah. No, you have, um, you have oh, A, sir. Sorry. Uh, a. I'm trying to read, zoom in on this stuff. Sorry. A is recent storm water flooding events update. Yep. Mr. Allen. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a couple of uh, brief introductory comments, and then I'm gonna ask Todd to uh, make a brief presentation, and then ask Adam to make some comments as well. Um, as council is, is very well aware, because I know you've received a number of comments about this, uh, experienced about 11 inches of rainfall between May 18th and May 29th and that did result in quite a bit of, of flooding in areas um, and so um, what we've done is we've made, compiled a list of all those areas and I've asked engineering to um, sort of inventory those areas take a preliminary look at those see what we might need to be to be might need to be done. Some of those are going to take, I think, some intensive studies and, and are going to be larger projects. Others are more things that we think we can go in and do some maintenance and, and get those uh, resolved relatively easily. But uh, you've received a copy of the report that engineering did um, in your package. I thought that was a good job uh, under you know very short notice and trying to put together this information for the meeting. And I'd like for Todd to um, just to do a brief overview of that report, please. Uh, Council Mayor, uh, what I'd like to do first is kind of explain to y'all uh, exactly what, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis when these stormwater um, issues or complaints come in. Uh, Obviously, I don't know if you know or not, but we do have a stormwater hotline that you know citizens can call. That's on the website. Uh, that goes directly to one of my staff's phone, and he che he checks it uh, on a, uh, a periodic basis. Um, and then obviously we get we got the journal information request uh, form online, and then we have stormwater services forms online, which basically any citizen go in there, fill out a form, and they. And when uh, they hit send, it sends out emails to staff, and then we get them immediately and then uh, prioritize the best we can on uh, visiting these issues. Now, I have two staff members that basically kind of juggle those requests and go out and investigate them, call the homeowners, uh, and, and go through so forth and so on. Now, Adam does do some of those things as well, especially if it comes straight to him, and, uh, and if he has time, uh, he does visit them, and so we all coordinate time together to, to, to figure out these things and see the, the best path forward as far as each individual case. Uh, if so, somebody, Abby, would you uh, scroll up to the uh, report? I'll just give a brief overview. Yep, give me one second. 
I will also tell you this while she's doing that. Uh, you know, I don't know if some of y'all know this. I think some of y'all do, some of you don't. Yeah, I'm aware of it. We, I think we'll just when leave you, her. When you go in there and uh, prioritize these, they prioritize with three categories. You got an A, you got a B, and you got a C. Um, a is obviously your worst. You got flooding in the actual home, uh, ditch blowouts, public safety hazards, um, flooding streets. Um, your, your category B is basically just uh, blowouts in, in structures that are, you know, non, uh, non safety hazard. Uh, maybe your crawl space is flooding, stuff like that. And then you have your third, which is category C, which is you got sediment buildup, channel blockage, or erosion, erosion uh, failures as far as your uh, niches and stuff along the way. So that's kind of how we prioritize them, and then they, they put into an inventory, uh, inventory spreadsheet, the kind of database, and Adam uses that uh, to try to facilitate what he can, and then prioritize it. If we can't, if his forces can't do that, then we'll stick it in a contract and move forward that way. Um, now going to the report. Uh, basically, what I wanted to do was just start scrolling, Abby, just to the um, each individual case, just. I'm assuming y'all read this, but basically, you know, we wanted you to kind of describe what was going on, how we felt we could we could um, facilitate or move forward in trying to help these individuals out. Uh, I will tell you that some of these uh, we're not going to be able to help out because their the, their properties are in the floodplain. The upstream flow is coming from uh, natural uh, upstream areas. And so if they're not getting flooded, their house is not getting flooded because they're not in the floodplain, their property's in the floodplain, their house is not in the floodplain, then obviously those cases, we really can't do anything for those folks. We just make them aware of what, what it is, why they're experiencing these things. Again, if you have five days of, of continuous rainfall and this, the ground is not soaking in the water, then you're going to have a, a tremendous, tremendous amount of sheet flow going on top of the ground. They can't just can't infiltrate. So this is why a lot of these folks were experiencing the things they were experiencing and why we hadn't seen some of these areas uh, in the past. Uh, for, for instance, the first one, uh, Forbeshire Court, uh, I'm sorry, Forbeshire Drive is, you know, it's, it's a fairly sized creek uh, on the back side of these lots. We did, we did some stuff a few years back uh, to uh, help uh, clean the, the, the creek. The creek is very close to some properties, and we, we understand that, and we try to monitor it. Uh, but for the most part, there, there's nothing we can do about that property without going there and, and doing a very highly cost capital improvements project and rechanneling the ditch itself. Now, I'm not saying that may not happen in the future if it keeps creeping towards these homes. Uh, for, for right now, you know, as we stated in the report. I mean, we feel that, you know, we clean the ditch, we'll monitor it, if it gets worse, then we'll, we'll shoot into action and, and come to y'all with a, with a plan. Um, so my other of these, I just, Abby, just slowly scroll through. I'm, I'm not going to go to every one of them, but um, uh, some of them were already were being fixed, like this one, top of the circle. The public works was already out there doing some work. That's going to get fixed. Um, Popper Glen, well, y'all have been kind of made aware of that. That's going to be a, a big challenge. So we're going to do an analysis of that, see what we can do. And I say analysis, it's the same thing we've done for uh, First Avenue and for any intro park. We have to assess and see what's going on out there first, get a game plan, and then figure out, um, you know, what the cost is going to be as far as a capital project. Um, so, again, keep scrolling, Abby. That's fine. Uh, and you know, you know, in intro part, we're going to fix that. We have a project coming on the way. So, you know, th those folks, unfortunately, they're going to experience water coming from Brandon Oaks, regardless of our improvements. We're just trying to channelize it to where it doesn't impact the yard as much. So go ahead. First Avenue, obviously, we've got a project moving forward right now on that. Oakstone, uh, I've tried to explain it best I could in the report. Basically, you know, this creek just needs to be monitored. And, and to be honest with you, it really can't be touched. It's a blue line stream. It would take a, a tremendous amount of 
of uh, permitting and mitigation costs to rechannelize that for one lot. So again, we're just going to monitor those situations. Dear Stein is a unique situation between private property owners. We're going to talk to them and try to get them to facilitate conversations together. I hope we, we can help them out. Uh, but that's something we can't spend stormwater funds for. All right. Kiwi Circle, man-made pipe between houses. Somebody put it in. They wasn't supposed to put it in. Well, we're going to probably remove it, and then hopefully that'll fix that situation. Uh, Providence Hills, uh, again, it's a very big, very big, decent-sized creek that is thrown inside somebody's house. Uh, we feel, uh, me and Adam feel that, you know, this is something we probably need to start looking at fairly soon. It is going to cost a good amount of money, uh, but we do have easements already in place due to foresight in the past, knowing that this was going to be an issue down the road, and now it's became an issue. So we will be coming to you with with uh, some costs and evaluations on that in the future so we can help this individual out. Red Barn, again, that area right there is basically the floodplain. I mean, that's how wide that floodplain is. And these homes are five to six acres. And that's the reason why they're five, six acre lots because half of the five of the acres of the lot is floodplain and an acre of the lot is where the house is sitting. So uh, not really much we can do about things like that when the floodplain's that wide and it's, uh, again, the ground's not infiltrating the, the water and it's just sheet flowing across. These people are going to experience several inches of rainfall draining down from Chestnut Lane, which is Chestnut Lane is north of that picture right there. Um, there is an EPCON site that Stalins is building upstream from them that we're going to talk to the Stalins about to try to keep an eye on. But again, that's a Stalins project that we have no uh, control over. Uh, Beaver Dams, we're going to be calling the Beaver Company. I've unsuccessfully been trying to call them and not really getting any feedback, but we are going to get somebody to uh, check these out and try to get these taken care of. Uh, inadequate culvert crossing, the NCDOT roadway, there's not much we can do. We try to keep it, it clean as best we can. If, when we know it, it needs to be, but uh, again, this is a, a, a flooding, an, an, a known flooding roadway um, that, and unless that DOT pipe is upsized, I, I don't know much we can do with it. Uh, all that is floodplain. That is, and, and the, the homeowner uh, is, uh, his house is right back at the floodplain. So he is going to experience sheet flow behind his house uh, when you get rain the way we got it. So there's not much we can do about that one. All right, and then last week, again, we jotted some additional ones down that were very minor in nature. We are looking at those now. We've already contacted the folks, tell them what needs to be done. Uh, you know, that's going to be on the work order the list. And so we're trying to move forward. And then <clears throat> I'll turn it over to Adam if he's got any uh, additional comments. So as we look through all these projects and as we kind of prioritize what's going to be done where Todd already kind of mentioned it, some of these projects are extremely expensive level projects to do anything with if we can do anything with them. So those projects are going to have to be looked at on a case by case basis. And it's going to take a significant amount of time to get those projects done because of the planning, the engineering, you know, the, the permitting that we'll have to do that's not just state, it's federal permitting that would have to be done for some of these projects if they rise to that point. Another thing that we have to remember is Todd, when he started out, remember talked about it with the way that we rank projects, A's, B's, and C's, but we also rank projects as kind of a first come first serve basis. Now, if your project's an A, it's gonna hopefully get done sooner than a project that's a C that just got called in. But if you call in today, it doesn't necessarily jump to the top of the list to be the next project done. If we can fit it in with 
you know, it's a little small repair that we can do while we're doing something else. Sometimes we'll be able to fit those in relatively quickly. Or if we're already in an area and we know we have another project, we try and group projects. I just want it to be known that it's not that we're not answering the resident's request or answering their concerns. It's that we try and treat everybody the same no matter when they call them. Uh, is that all, Adam? Yes. Okay. Um, that's a lot of information, Council. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Mo Mr. Morris. Do you have any comments or questions for to bring back, Adam? Yeah, I do, I do have one question uh, regarding the DOT pipe that seems to be undersized on the Union Grove area. So, what what uh, ha what can what's our alternative um, at this point? Is there a mechanism with DOT that the town contacts them and makes them aware of this and they just ignore us or exactly what happens there, Todd? That's, I mean, that's, that's correct. I mean, they, they, they know about these areas already that, and they realize that these pipes are probably not sized appropriately because they've been in the ground for 20, 30 years. Um, and unfortunately they have no mechanism to fix them unless basically they got to close the roads and fix it just like they did Chestnut Lane about a year and a half ago where the, where the pipe just basically blew out. And uh, on that note, on the Red Barn Trail, if you go back to the report, that big flipping, that pipe, that's exactly where they had to, to fix it upstream from those folks. Pipe blew out. That's how much water's coming through there. And now they've upsized it, which has made, made uh, the velocity a little bit better. And so these, these, pop, these people are probably experiencing even more flow than they did. Uh, previously, because it was a choke point back then, and now it's not. Um, but yeah, I mean, we uh, we again we try to uh, let them know about them. We we tell them that you know they need, they need to be clean. But uh, you know, if it's not a, a true safety public safety hazard, I, they're just not going to get to it, and, and at least not now, of course, the way things are. Uh, I hate to say that, but that's just the way it is. And, uh, and, and you know, we, we are, as we talked about, I talked about a couple council meetings ago, we, you know, the stormwater grant, bill grant that we're, we're doing, uh, that we hopefully get, I mean, you know, that would study those type of areas and at least let DOT know, you know, what, what the size of the pipe needs to have, needs to be that's in Africa. So we give them information. That don't mean they're going to fix it. And the only other thing we do like we did in the past and try to do share calls situations. But I'll be honest with you, I don't think the DOT would do that right now anyway because of the money situation. So um, you know, it's just going to have to be a, a wait and see, unfortunately, and, and see if we can work in the future to try to alleviate some of these issues along their roadway. Does that answer your question, Mr. Morris? Yeah, unfortunately, that was kind of the answer I thought I would receive. Um, basically, yeah. you just got, and, and nothing against our staff, but, you know, being familiar with CARPO and DOT a little bit now, um, their, their non-responsiveness or dismissiveness is really getting frustrating on a lot of levels. Um, but, but thank you for answering that, Todd. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Head, did you have a question? Um, no, I think uh, most of mine have already been answered. It just it just appears that you know this is something that you know is not going to go away. We're going to have to look at, and um, I appreciate everyone's efforts to date. I think there's, I think we've got some understanding of what's needed, and then we just have to determine, prioritize, and and see what we can do and what we get in CBOT. Uh, this is not going to be a short term fix. It's going to be a long term. Um, thing that we're just going to have to constantly look at based on funding and and uh, you know uh, i guess the good news is that that we've had have done something in the past like over there on first avenue and it's just taking uh, uh prioritizing and, and determining the needs and and react so that's pretty much it uh mr barber yeah I, you know thank mr head said the right thing there is I you know I think like with First Avenue we've got we've got to make priorities on this thing and um, try and tackle one issue at a time I really do appreciate the information and update on everything and um, like to thank um, Mr. Hutsinger and Mr. McLam for doing that and 
thank you, and I'll refrain from saying anything about the DOT for right now since I got family that works for the DOT, so <laughs> I'll leave that alone. But back to you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Ms. Howe, did you have a question for stormwater and flooding? Not right now since I'm on the committee. Um, I don't Thank know you. when the next day it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. McIntyre? Yeah, um, so Mr. Allen, Mr. Hunsinger, and Mr. McLam, um, thank you for taking your time and putting this together in relative short fashion. I know that when you guys started doing this, it rained again, and then you got some more um, places that you had to go, so I appreciate that. What I would ask is, um, well, one other thing I want, I want to also mention, I know that you guys went out to quite a few places, even I think yesterday, Adam was out meeting with some homeowners in, in, in the town. So I do appreciate the attentive, the attentiveness of, of you guys to, to this particular issue. What I would ask is, even if we don't have news for residents that we're going to go and repair this right away, if we can make sure, and I'm sure that you probably did, but if we can just reassure them and let them know that we've looked at it, here's our findings so far, whatever we need to provide them in terms of whether something needs to be studied greater or so forth, if we can provide that to them. Because um, I think while every resident wants to make sure that everything is repaired, we, we, are, we definitely can't do it. You know, we don't have that, that um, financial ability. But if we can let them know that it's something that we've looked at, here are the, the, the situation, here are the options that we have, here's the current situation. That way they know and they feel informed and that we've, done, we've gone full circle looking at it and getting back to them. I appreciate that. But good job by you guys, by the way. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. I would ditto Mr. McIntyre's comments. And if there's nothing else, we'll move on to item B. Anyone? Okay. Item B is Old Monroe Financing Alternatives. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Your Honor. Again, if I could make a couple brief introductory comments, and then I'm going to ask Jim Wadowitz to weigh in on this topic. Um, this came up at the last meeting where we were talking about the delay. Um, DOT, as you know, they delayed right-of-way acquisition for any new projects at the present time. Uh, hope, you know, that's a temporary delay. We just don't know how temporary, if that means three months or six months or a year, no one knows exactly. But um, one question that came up was, how is the town going to fund its remaining obligation of $4 million for that DOT right of way? We made a $1 million payment in the current fiscal year. There's no payment due in the upcoming fiscal year, 2021, but you will have a million dollar payment due in FY 21-22. And the question was, going forward, um, what is the plan or what are our options for paying for that? And so Jim has looked at that, and I'm going to ask him to uh, report on that. One thing I would say is there's definitely no need for council to make a decision on this at the present time. Um, you, your bond authorization, authorization doesn't expire until the fall of 2021. So I would encourage you not to rush into any decision on this, but in terms of when you do enter into your budget deliberations next spring, take a look at this, take a look at your financial situation and make the determination at that time. But now I'd like to uh, turn the floor over to Jim, your honor, for him to discuss this. Mr. Wadowitz, are you there? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ray. So basically, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, well, I hear you fine. Okay. Uh, basically, we have a couple of options. I'll go through real quickly. Option A, we have um, we, are, we have a $9.5 million authorization out there, good through uh, November of 21. So we have another $4 million requirement, a $1 million starting in July of 21. Um, so we have to make a decision for November of 21, if we want to take down the money from that bond, we could take down part of it. Um, option B would be to plan on go, you know, making a plan right now and using operating funds. For example, in this year's budget, we have about $600,000 that's unencumbered that will be going into our debt service capital reserve account. 
Um, then we could use another 400,000 from our surplus, which I'm projecting. But the only downside to that would be, you know, Todd's always got these projects coming up and I'd hate to tie up our uh, surplus from our debt service for the next four years. And, and then option C might be a combination. Maybe we'd borrow $2 million before 1121 and then uh, make up the other 2 million out of the operating funds. So don't forget next year is our reval year. We're expecting uh, the pie to get a little bit bigger um, as far as the uh, respective values to go up, keep our same 18 and a half cents will be our plan. Um, but certainly I think it's a good idea to start planning for it now, thinking about it, m making sure we have discussions about it. Is that all, oh, <coughs> excuse me, all Mr. Wadowitz? At this point, yes, Mayor. Okay, so it's uh, my understanding to clarify for council that we have time until no, uh, the fall of next year. So in the meantime, um, I would think it would be prudent for you to put these alternatives and the positives and the negatives of them in some sort of um, readable spreadsheet for the for the council to digest and bring it back for a discussion, if you wouldn't mind. That would be, that's just my comments. I'm gonna go over to Mr. Morse now. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And Jim, thank you so much um, for this. I um, was reviewing the the, um, the packet and your options A, B, and C. And, you know, B would be my preference, of course, but that's, we have like oodles of money to pull from, but I, I have a feeling when we get down the road, C is probably gonna be more pragmatic. Um, but thank you again, because this is really clear and helped me out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Mr. Head? Uh, I just uh, piggyback on uh, Mr. Morris's comments that, uh, Jim, I appreciate the efforts here. Um, as uh, Mr. Morris said, I do think we have some time and let's just use it wisely. And, uh, say maybe uh, beginning of uh, the new year, 2021, that we revisit this uh, again and see, you know, we'll, we'll have some more information of, of where we are with the pandemic and uh, where our funds are looking and, and uh, you know, that still gives us about uh, almost a year to figure out what next steps. Thank you. Um, Ms. Howe, did you have any comments on old Monroe, on old, old Monroe financing alternatives that the information that was given? Well, I, I can't understand why we've given them a million dollars and we're still sort of stuck in, but I'm not a finance person. So. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wadowitz, are you still with us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you can put something in writing to send to Ms. Howe to ex explain why the million dollars was put up front. Sure, and send it sure. to the rest of the council. I know it's been explained before, but you know, even I forget. I'd like something so that we all can remember and have something to reference, if you don't mind. Sure thing. Thank you. Uh, I hope that helps, Ms. Howe. Uh, Mr. McIntyre? Yeah, um, Mr. Waldowitz, if I can ask you um, for a favor. Um, I know that we've drawn down five hundred thousand dollars from a bond, um, from that bond already. So we are already paying back that bond. That five hundred thousand was coupled with another five hundred thousand from our general fund to give them the million. The question that I have for you is: you give us three options, right? Um, option one, which is basically to draw down a further four million from the bond, which means that we would have take drawn down four point five million dollars. Can you sort of model this in terms of a repayment amount, what the terms would be, um, how, when we would pay it back, what the you know, amount we would have to take into our debt service um, amount in our budget from um, when we would draw that down. I know that we have to pay, make a payment by July 2021, which is the next fiscal year, not, the, not next one, but the one after that. And that means that we would have to, by that time, draw down another million dollars if we're going to go with option A. And then but before November 2021, a further three million dollars if we are still going to go with option A. So if I can get some idea on that, that would kind of help in terms of the decision making. 
And also, too, you give option two, which is basically two million, two million, you know, two from the general, two from the bond. Again, that would mean that we would be borrowing $2.5 million and, you know, repaying that back. So the, the, the debt service that we would have for that, the terms and so forth, that's what I really want to see from a $4.5 million or $2.5 million. Uh, and that would sort of aid in our decision making. Um, <clears throat> I do commend you and Mr. Allen for trying to put this to us way before it's due. So we have, you know, almost a year and four months before we have to really make a final decision. And I want to commend you guys for bringing that to our attention now so, so that when we get to that point, we will know exactly sort of, you know, what we can do. Um, the one thing I want to mention is that today I attended a, a CRTPO meeting. It was Union County, really, all the, the representatives for CRTPO with, within Union County. And there were some people from DOT on there. And I did ask about the Monroe Road and when there would be a resumption of this Monroe Road project. Again, the gentleman reiterated that he is the, the, the DOT Division 10 considers Monroe Road project to be a very important project that they want to make sure that we that get, that gets done. However, based on the revenue projections, they had to table it. He did say that they would look at it again in August to see if the revenue based on the fact that we've reopened the economy and people are sort of moving around again, there might be a possibility that they may be able to start this up again in August. He's not promising anything, but that's when it will be looked at and that we will get an update on that. If things are projected to be as they have, meaning that the 300 you know, plus million dollar shortfall, they're anticipating that these projects may be, be, de may be delayed till 2022. So um, one of the things that I've said to them is, listen, all, all our town, like every other town, we have financial challenges, but we have made a commitment to build this road and we've made a commitment to the tune of $5 million. And right now, to just put it aside, while we understand the, the shortcomings in terms of financing, but to put it aside doesn't give any solace to our residents who travel that road on a daily basis because it's been quite a while that this road needs to be updated or upgraded, and that hasn't been done. And every time this, you know, we think we're getting close to the if we're getting close to the line, it's like you know somebody pulls the football away from Charlie Brown. So. We just want to make sure that we, I, I want to make sure that you guys are aware of the conversation that I have with them. And, you know, as we go forward, I, it is something that I will keep asking on to just, just to be able to provide you with the most up-to-date information that I have. Okay. Mr. Waterwitz, did you get all that? Yes, yes. I think it's a good idea to do the debt service, um, showing what the uh, repayment would be. I'll work on that. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. If there's no further comments, we'll move on. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> oh, Mr. Barber, <laughs> sorry. Oh, that's fine. I haven't done the, that in a while. Oh, well, that's fine. The uh, uh, I just I just wanted to say since we're into this, um, and you know, was we're kind of we're into the agreement. I think. I'm like Mr. Waters, I appreciate the information, and with Mr. Allen, I think what I heard was sage advice. Is I think we don't need to rush into any decision right now, and look at it in the future. Um, is I think we're kind of in a waiting game right now. Is uh, that's that's where I am at, and that's what I wanted to say. Is I, I agree with that. I think I don't think we need to rush into any decision right now, and let's see how it goes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Sorry about that, Mr. Barber. That's fine. All right, there's no further, if there's no further comments, we'll move on to the manager's update. Anyone? Nope. Okay, Mr. Allen, do you have anything else to add? Um, a couple of brief items, Your Honor. Um, just briefly, um, Abby Ball, uh, uh, Brandy Deese, and Gary Evans are, have started working on planning for a groundbreaking ceremony for the hub project, since that's going to be a big project here for the town and a date and a time have been established for that and we'll provide you something in writing uh, for that because of course we want the council uh, and the mayor to participate in that groundbreaking um, ceremony but it's going to be uh, july 14th at 5 30 p.m and that will be prior to the council meeting that you have that day so that um, um, if in fact we're back to physical council meetings 
at town hall, um, then you'll be there a uh, short distance away from town hall prior to the council meeting. But that's July the 14th at 5.30 p.m. Um, I also wanted to uh, report that at the last meeting, um, Hayden presented a proposal to council uh, for a summer camp for our town employees who may not be able to have uh, been able to procure childcare services for the summer. Happy to report that most of our employees were successful in procuring that. And so we actually only have had a very few number of kids who uh, would be available and expressed an interest in that. So we are not going to need to be able to put on that program. I want to commend Hayden for his work in trying to put that together and looking after our employees, but that will not be necessary. So we will not be moving forward with that. And then finally, um, just wanted to report that town hall opened to the public without appointments on June the 1st as part of the phase two reopening of the state. Um, things have gone well there. We have had people coming into town hall, but not a, we haven't been inundated. So I think that's gone well. Um, we're back having about 50% of the staff in the building at any given time. And our staff has done a great job in, in trying to maintain their distance, um, stay in their work areas as much as they can, and always wear a mask whenever they're out of their work area. So I think that's gone quite well. Um, and um, it's good to, to be able to see some people that we haven't seen in a while and um, pleased how that's going. And as we look at Phase three, um, hopefully that's going to take place uh, near the end of June. As you've probably seen, the, the numbers of COVID-19 cases, both here in North Carolina and nationally, have started to increase since the Memorial Day holiday. So that's a little bit concerning. But um, as we move forward, we're hopeful that all of the employees will be back in the building all the time um, by the end of June. But that's, that's something we'll have to take a look at. Um, that's all I have, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to move on to council comments. Ms. Walter? Uh, Ms. Howe? Yes. Your council, council comments? Oh. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Sorry. I know, um, it's hard to, I, know, I know it's hard to hear this way, it, it, so we're trying to speak as loud as we can. Well... Everybody's doing a good job, and uh, I think each department should be uh, credited for that. But everybody's working together, and this is what I like to see, that we, we are helping each other, and uh, it's a boost to each employee. And uh, I, I think that's good that we are in, uh, at this level with uh, our caring for other people. And I hope the uh, monkey gets out of this uh, computer here pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to say it like that. <laughs> but, oh I understand that. Okay. Well thank you. All right. Thank you, Miss Howe. Mr. Okay. Head. Um as always I want to thank the staff. Um, you know, this meeting and, and all the meetings that we've had. Um during this, this crisis, um, staff has not missed a beat. Um, and, you know, just, just some of the things that we're talking about to, today emphasize that, that, you know, we're looking down the road, we're, we're working on plans, we're still thinking about our, our residents, and that, that's very commendable. And uh, just appreciate uh, everyone's work there. And I have no further comments. Okay, thank you. Mr. Barber. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the great job Abby did on the Newtown website. Uh, it's good to be updated and more user friendly. Uh, great job, thank you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the Union County School Board. I know it was a tough decision, but they opened up to where we're going to actually have, and my son's a graduate, so they're actually going to have actual graduations with the you know, the kids can attend. So I commend them for that tough decision. Uh, also, as uh, I think it's Mr. Allen reiterated that in Union County, we've now topped 600, over 600 COVID-19 <coughs> cases with uh, 22 deaths. So my prayers and thoughts are still with people and stay safe and, you know, and hopefully people will get well. And 
also want to say a prayer for Mr. Alvarez here. I know he put up that, you know, they have found a, a you know, cancer here again. And I uh, just want to tell you, we're thinking about you and my prayers go out to you and, and for a speedy recovery and, and putting up the good fight on that. And that's all I got. And thank you, everybody. Mr. McIntyre. Thank you. Um, Ray, you and your staff, um, you know, you guys have done a really good job. We're in this COVID-19 thing and we had the storm water and you guys were able to go out there, take a look at things, come back with a report to present to council. So I do appreciate that. Um, as always, you, you're, you're, you know, the, the staff down there, we're really proud of um, in the job that you do. Um, Brandy, I know that you down in planning, you guys had a lot with the COVID-19. All, all of a sudden, people just kind of inundated you with all sorts of requests and site visits. And you put your boots on and you got in your truck and you went out there taking, taking a look at things, making sure things are done. So good job. The town kept running during this time. So that's a testament to the great staff that we had. Todd, you were able to shut down, the, the close the road and make me drive through Lake Park every day. But that's a... a a drive I'm willing to take because of the e the the ease of navigating around Sardis Road. So good job there, Abby. Good, very good job on your on the website. As Mr. Barber said, we really like it. It seems to be a lot more intuitive. Um, putting some of the the um, tabs or the buttons up front so that people can kind of navigate easily. Adam, you again and and your um response when I call and I ask a question or I forward an email, you do go out and meet with the people. So I do appreciate that. Jim, I've been coming to you a lot with a lot of questions from a financial standpoint. So I, I do appreciate you being on your toes and coming back with different numbers for us. Thank you very much. Um, and um, Hayden, a, a, a neighbor called me the other day asking me to intervene because you chased some people off the field. And I said, no, can do. We have to practice what we preach. So um, <laughs> I, didn't lose, I didn't lose his support, but I did tell him that, you know, if the big man comes to you and tells you, you tells you you can't do it, there's no way I'm going to intervene at all. So really good job. Miss Quinn, I do appreciate all that you do. Thank you very much. Um, Carrie, thank you again. Um, do appreciate the staff a lot. Um, I do want to make one comment there, um, and that is in relation to our sheriff's department. I'm really proud of the work that they do in the town. Um, you know, we, we, we've been, you know, we've been, blessed i would say to have the police presence here and the way that they interact with with people within our town i think our town is very safe um i think adding the new sergeant position i think that's what that's what it is to the town um to our town police force there is going to help and hopefully you know help um keep our crime numbers down um it's unfortunate that we do have some crime and there's certain things that are happening right now <laughs> based on the mayor's um, two proclamations that he read in terms of the death of Mr. Floyd and also, you know, gun violence. But I want to say that we do have a very good police force that I'm proud to, to you know, proud to have in Indian Trail. So I, I want to recognize that. And Council, again, as, as, I, as we go forward, I'll try and give you as much information I can when it comes to the road or any of these things. Mr. Mayor, I, I do, as Mr. I want to echo Mr. Barber's comments in terms of your diagnosis. I know you're a fighter. You have a very good spirit because, you know, when when um, Mr. Allen mentioned about the you know the um, the ceremony over there with the, the the apartments and the hotel, the first thought that came to my mind is how are you going to hold your shovel? But you know that's just something I was thinking of. But you have a good attitude too, <laughs> and I appreciate I I appreciate that your sense of humor. And I know you're a fighter, and I know you're going to be mm. this. But thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Morse. Uh, yes, um, um, I'm just going to pretty much say what Mike does is ditto to all the comments of, regarding staff. Uh, Y'all have done a remarkable job through these trying times for sure. Um, the, uh, the website, I, I did get a chance to poke around on it, and it is greatly improved. It, it, I like it. Uh, I can get around. I actually submitted a form while we were here having council meeting. And uh, the, the one thing I would recommend is that we find a big, a, a, a bigger button that'll go right to NCDOT with our complaints. And, and uh, no offense, Mr. Barber, to any, anybody that's working there. But <laughs> sure would be nice to have a, you know, or 
all the <clears> council <throat> residents can find one button and wear it out and just send them all the complaints. But again, um, a good meeting and um, looking forward to um, the, the 23rd when we finalize the budget. And Mayor Alvarez. Okay, don't forget uh, everybody else. Talk. Okay, um, thank you, Marcus and Todd, for the comments. As I was reminded, um, my life has been a, a bumpy ride, uh, but not quite as bumpy as our roads. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to reiterate what everybody said for staff. But I, I want to say uh, a couple. You know, a couple of thank yous, um, Kathy. Um, during this crisis and all these Zoom meetings and limited access to town hall, uh, you've really been my my right hand. No pun intended. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank and, you. And I appreciate you. Thank and you. Abby, thanks for getting all the uh, messages out there and all the postings, keeping the people informed, which is a vital part of the job I do. And just remember that all life is precious. People get angry, and when they get angry, sometimes you can't control your emotions. And being locked up in houses like we have been, as you see, the, this, the unrest is, is out there. But there's a lot of cries for people like us, elected officials, to just listen. And... It's time that we have the mantra of I'm ready to listen and encourage the leaders among them to step up and state the change they are expecting, the change they want. And we as elected officials have a responsibility not only to listen, but to help guide them in the right direction. And with all that's going on, it's really difficult to be in the position all of us are in right now as you know, nationally, we don't have the power. Statewide, we don't have the power. But as it's uh, as it's stated, is everybody still? Can everybody still hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Sorry, someone tried to call me on my phone. Um, that change begins with the face that stares back at you in the morning. So, just uh, my request would be. When you wake up in the morning, just ask yourself, what positive change am I going to make? A simple smile, a hello, can change someone's life forever. Um, so, I, I mean, that's really what I have to say. Thank you for listening. I want to thank everybody for, for being here. And um, God bless. Um, so... Uh, Abby, can you scroll up a little so I can read my comments? <laughs> okay. So, uh, the, uh, this meeting, this meeting, we are going, we're going into a closed session. So this meeting link will be closed and the meeting will continue in a new meeting link specifically for a closed session. Once the closed session discussion has finished, the June 9th, 2020 town council meeting will resume live and recorded. Other than motions to close, no other items will be discussed. Council will be entering into a closed session under NCGS 143-318-11A3. Uh, at that, at this, I need a motion to uh, go into closed session. I'll make that motion. Mr. Barber's made the motion. Ms. Uh, Mr. McIntyre's made, it was Mr. Barber, wasn't it? It wasn't Mr. McIntyre, I didn't hear. My voice is going Mr. in and out. Ma it was McIntyre. I know Sorry. we got the same accent, but, but it wasn't. Me. Yeah, I, yeah I, can't, I can't tell the two of you apart. <laughs> that, phone, that phone call has messed with my connection. Um, that, <laughs> uh, yeah, I see you floating above the Golden Gate there, Marcus. Um, yep. Mr. McIntyre has made the motion to go into closed session. Mr. Head? In favor. Mr. Barber? In favor. Uh, Ms. Howe? In favor. Um, all right, who am I missing? Mr. In Morse. Favor. Mr. Morse. Mr. Morse. Okay. All right. All right. So this time we'll take a break, close this link. Uh, 
five minutes. Everybody, please be on for the closed session. I'm running out of battery. Uh, All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you.